Happy Halloween, everyone. Today, I have a special spooky video for you. I just finished capturing data on the Ghost Nebula, so I carved my pumpkin back here to match, and I thought this would be a really nice opportunity for a special treat in the form of a data giveaway and a basic processing video with free software. I do wanna thank Ugreen for sponsoring this video and I'll say more about their awesome 100 watt power station halfway through. So all you have to do to get my Ghost Nebula data is uh, just join my email list. And if you already have, you can still get it. Um, you'll get sent a download link. And once there, you can just click up here on the folder name and choose download to get all four FITS files. And you are of course welcome to share your results on social media if you do try out processing it. My goal with this video is to show something that I don't think I've ever shown before on the channel, which is my basic workflow for LRGB processing. So this is what I do if I'm working with mono data and I'm shooting through luminance, red, green, and blue filters. And what will be a little unique about this video is I'm gonna show this process with completely free, open source, cross-platform software. So anyone with a computer and an internet connection can follow along with this. I have also purposefully tried to keep this straightforward, so I'm not going to be doing anything super fancy or complex in this video. I'll put the links for downloading the software, which are Cyril and GNU Image Manipulation Program, in the description for this video. And we can go ahead and jump in. I'll start by opening Cyril. You can see I'm on version 1.0.6. I should also mention that I am on a Mac. This is Mac OS Monterey. Uh, don't update to Ventura if you haven't already, because I think Cyril does not, neither Cyril nor the GNU image manipulation program are working currently properly on Ventura. So stay with Monterey for now until they can work out those uh, new issues. Okay, so here in Serial, the first thing we're gonna do is click on the home directory button or the current working directory button, whatever you wanna call it. It's this little blue icon up here with the home symbol. And you're going to set it to wherever you downloaded the data. So find this folder, SH2136 Ghost Nebula and click open. Then if you click open here, it will go right to that folder and the first thing I'm gonna do is work on the luminance file. And really by work on it, I mean just stretch it. So I've already done the pre-processing on these uh, using the scripts here. So that just means calibration, registration, stacking, all that. So we end up with these four files. And so this is a fully stacked luminance file, but nothing else has been done to it. And when you open it up, it's a little bit underwhelming. Um, that's because we're right now in the linear space. Um, so there's different visualization modes. This linear mode is just showing you what the computer sees, uh, which is, is not much, but we can auto stretch it so we can see what it looks like. And it looks like that. So it already looks pretty good. Um, this is plenty of, of data from a dark site. So uh, you could expect that it will it will look pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back off because I wanna show you that is just a preview, right? So uh, if you hover over it, it very clearly says, warning, this is only a visualization because um, it's not actually stretching it by clicking auto stretch there. It's just for working on it if you wanna do some image processing while the data is still linear. But if you just wanted to apply that auto stretch to the data, what you can do is go to the image processing menu, go down to histogram transformation and click this little uh, gear icon. This is like the auto stretch icon. And there it is. Now for me, the auto stretch is just a little bit um, aggressive. So what I'm gonna do is maybe just back off ever so slightly. And this is sort of hard to do. I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna click apply. And then from here, I'm just going to stretch it just a little bit more like that. Okay, so 
that looks good to me. I'll go ahead and I've applied that. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it. And that's all that I'm gonna do with this uh, luminance image. We're now ready to work on the RGB, but first I have to save off this luminance image. So I'm gonna go up here and right next to the save icon is a little save the current image in a different name button. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna go down here to where it says supported image files and change it to TIFF files. And I'll save it as loom.tiff, that's fine. And we can leave all of these options alone. We're gonna next go into the GNU image manipulation program and that can handle 32-bit floating point fine. So we'll leave it like that and click save. Okay, next we're going to combine the red, green, and blue images. So I mean, if I just wanted to open one just to take a look at it, I could. So I'll just open the blue image. And again, we don't see anything here because it's set to linear, but if I choose auto stretch, it looks like that. And so you can see it looks fairly similar to the luminance image, but a lot noisier because I didn't get as much of each color channel. Um, but still pretty good. And to do the RGB compositing, we go up to the image processing menu and go down near the bottom of this menu, one up from the bottom is RGB compositing. And this is pretty easy. All you have to do is just click on uh, this little button where it says none next to each color and put it in the appropriate file. So I'll click none there and choose red.fit. I'll click on the green one and choose green.fit. And I'll click on the blue one and choose blue.fit. Okay, and then over here, we're still seeing a black and white image. That's just because if you look up here, there's these tabs and we're in the red tab. But if we click on the RGB tab, we get a visualization of what the full uh, RGB color image looks like. And I think it looks pretty good. The, the one thing I notice is that there's maybe a blue bias in the shadows. And there is also some green noise, it looks like. Um, so there are ways to sort of adjust that here, but I rarely use that um, because I'm going to apply something called a photometric color calibration anyways. So that's really not necessary. Um, we can now just close this and we have the RGB composite open. So uh, next, we're just gonna do a couple little things here before we stretch it. Um, I'm going to try to remove some of that green noise. So if you go up to image processing, go down to remove green noise. Um, for some reason, this is grayed out. So I'm just going to change it to something else and then reduce the amount. Let's do 35% and then I'm gonna change it back to average neutral and apply. Okay, and so that was a subtle change. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on YouTube, but uh, if you do that on your own machine, hopefully you'll see that in some of this dust, it neutralized some of that green noise. So I can go ahead and close that. And now I'm gonna go back to the image processing menu, go down to color calibration, click, and then click on photometric color calibration. And uh, the first thing here is it doesn't know where this is in the sky, so we have to tell it. So again, this is Sharpless 136, so we can just type in here SH2-136 and click Find. And you have to be connected to the internet, but it pulls down from Simbad, um, which is an object catalog online, uh, run out of Strasbourg. Um, it finds where that object is, and it puts in the coordinates right here. Now, uh, in this case, it looks like Cyril maybe found uh, the correct focal distance and pixel size from the image directly. But in case it doesn't, you can just enter 1000 there and 3.76 for the pixel size, and it will be the correct resolution. And that's it. Now we can just click OK, and it goes out to the star catalogs and tries to find stars that match in this field. And then it does a color correction based on the actual color of the stars. And you can see it's already done and it did a really nice job. That looks much better. It removed all of that blue bias automatically. 
So I can click OK, or I can just close it now, actually. Uh, we already applied it. And again, this is just a visualization, just because it's just the auto stretch. So now let's go ahead and stretch it. And with really good data, sometimes I'll use um, this arc sign stretch or this generalized hyperbolic. Um, I've tried it on this data and I, I wasn't happy with what it did to the stars. So I don't know if it's something I'm doing wrong, but I'm just gonna use the histogram transformation in, uh, again. And uh, this time, instead of applying this auto stretch, I'm just gonna do it completely manually. So I'm just gonna take this middle slider and bring it over here to the left and apply and then do that same thing again and apply and do it a third time and apply. And I'll do it a fourth time. And apply, I'll bring up Okay, something like that. I don't wanna do a super aggressive stretch at this point. So um, this kind of histogram peak like this, uh, just over from the left looks pretty good to me. Don't worry about darkening the shadows at this point because um, when we do the LRGB combination, we don't actually want the shadow information to be too dark because it's extracting the color from that. Um, so this looks fine. I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And that's all we have to do in Cyril. So let's go ahead and save this as RGB. I'll just call it RGB, and I'm gonna save it as a TIFF file. And once again, I got to that from this little button right to the right of the save button. So I'm gonna save it as RGB.TIFF, back to that same folder, 32-bit is fine, and click Save. Um, I should say, if you're using Photoshop, instead of the GNU image manipulation program, you might want to save in 16-bit because a lot of processes in Photoshop are not 32-bit compatible. Okay, so now let's go ahead and open up GNU image manipulation program. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. As an astrophotographer, I find there are tons of things that need charging before I go out for the night. Everything from star trackers to smartphones to camera batteries. But keeping track of all their chargers is annoying and it takes up a lot of space. So I really appreciate Ugreen's 100 watt power strip because this really simplifies my charging needs. It can sit right on my desk and it provides plenty of power for me to fast charge my phone, my laptop, my star tracker, my camera battery all at once. It has three USB-C, one USB-A, and three AC outlets so you can charge seven devices at once and it does support fast charging on both my Android and Apple devices. So check the link in the description to buy one today and go to file open and we'll open our rgb.tiff file it will say something about the color profile it doesn't really matter what you do here i'm just going to click convert okay and this looks good um, i'm going to now add our luminance as its own layer so i'll go to file open as layers and choose loom.tiff and click open Okay, that looks good too. So we have rgb.tiff and then we have loom.tiff on top. And on this loom.tiff on top, we're gonna change the blending mode, which is right up here at the top of the layers panel from normal to luminance. And luminance is all the way at the bottom of this menu. Okay, so I hope, hopefully that came across what just happened. Here was before, completely black and white. And here is luminance, and that started bringing in a little bit of color. Now, it's still very desaturated. Um, so there's a couple things that we can do to this RGB.tiff layer to make it uh, less saturated, to, make, to, to bring out the color. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the visibility of loom.tiff so you can just see what we're doing here. And I'm gonna go up to colors, and go down to shadows-highlights. And with this, 
I'm going to bring up the shadows. So you can see the shadows is set to zero and I'm just going to raise them up like that to let's say we'll start at 60 around 60 is fine and so you can see this is a very flat look it's not the look that we want to end up with but what we're telling this is that in this color information we want to grab color from this background uh too i'm gonna back off just a little bit okay that all looks fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And then the next thing, I'm gonna, so if we just look at it now, not a huge change yet, but the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm going to add saturation to this layer. And actually when I'm doing this, I like to have the loom layer turned on. So then you can get a preview of the final image. So go ahead and turn the loom layer on, but make sure that you have the RGB layer selected. We'll go back to the colors menu and choose saturation. And this is where it gets really cool because the image will come alive with color. So you just grab this little scale slider and move it up. And you can see at 1.6, I can see a little bit of the color coming into the stars, especially into those orange stars. But if I keep moving it up, I'm going, I'm going to go way up here. I'm over two now. Let's see, 2.1. Okay, that is looking a lot better. Um, you can see some of the blue in the blue halos. You can see a lot more color in the nebula. And if I want to see exactly what this is doing, I can turn it off and on, the effect of this saturation, by checking or unchecking the preview button. So I'm going to uncheck it. That was before, barely any saturation in the image turn it back on and you can see all of the natural colors of the stars and the nebula are coming out really well. Okay, you can always zoom in as well. Just click on the main window and then on a Mac, just hit shift plus. Um, and so you can see, I'm gonna turn the preview back on and off. That's before, that's after. And you can see this is a really cool yellow reflection nebula, which we rarely ever see. Another one I can think of is, um, around Antares in Scorpius, but uh, that's really neat. I really love that ghost reflection nebula, getting the yellow color of it. And then these little things, I mean, those are mostly gray, but they're, they're still interesting looking. Uh, we're also getting a little bit of color here. This is a Herbig Harrow object. And I mean, the, the star field, this is how I like my stars to look. Um, you know, there's, I like the little stars to be basically filled in with color, but these big bright blue stars to not be super saturated in the core. Cause I just think it looks a little bit artificial, but other people do like the more filled in look. In that case, you could go back to Cyril and use arc sign stretch rather than, um, histogram transformation, but I'm really liking how this looks. So I'm going to go ahead and click okay to accept it. And I'll just take a final look here. Let me zoom back out with the minus key. I don't really see much I would change. Um, maybe I'd do a final crop. You know, I could consider um, going starless with Starnet++ and we could bring out more of the background dust. That might be something I would do. I'm not gonna show that in this video because I really just wanted to show the basic uh, process of combining luminance with RGB and sort of give you an idea of um, how much uh, saturation you really have to add to get a look like this. Let me go ahead and turn off the luminance. So this is what the RGB looks like. So really pretty weird looking. And that is completely normal. I want to emphasize that. When you combine RGB with luminance, your straight RGB is going to look very flat and very saturated. And that is just completely normal processing for this kind of thing. Once you add the luminance, it completely changes the, the nature of the image. So um, that's really it. If I wanted, to, if I thought I might continue processing in 
the GNU image manipulation program, I could just do file save and save as an XCF file. I'll go ahead and do that. But when you're all done and happy with it, you can do file export. And from here, you can save it as any type of file. Just uh, type in a different file name if you want JPEG or PNG or TIFF or whatever you want and click export. Well, that's it for this one. Uh, hopefully you learned something about LRGB processing and I look forward to seeing some of your takes on this data on social media. Feel free to tag me if you want me to see it. And you're now seeing all of my current members on my Patreon campaign. If you want to see your name in the credits, you can sign up over on patreon.com slash nebula photos. It has a bunch of benefits outside of your name in the credits of long videos. Um, I have made some exclusive videos just for Patreon. There's monthly Zoom chats. There's a Discord community where you can ask questions. There's monthly imaging challenges. There's uh, imaging projects with a group. And of course, there's a direct way to message me with all of your comments and questions. So if you like these videos, you want to learn uh, more and learn faster, consider joining over there on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Again, the link is patreon.com slash nebulaphotos. Until next time, this has been Nico Carver, Clear Skies.